This is Dan Rogers, your host on We the People Town Square, coming to you from the center of the universe, the high plains of Texas, near the headwaters of the Prairie Dog Town Fork of the Red River. Today is January the 6th of 2024. We're here with Brian Maxwell, who he wants to be the county chair of Randall County. Brian, welcome. Howdy, good to be here. Why do you want to be the county chair of Randall County? I uh, want to help the county grow, the county party grow. And um, I believe that uh, we, we, we need to get beyond some of the drama that we've had in the past. The county party has had, oh, some growing pains, I guess, for the last uh, seven, ten years. And we need to get beyond that. We need to grow the party back out. I think the focus needs to be directed more to getting people involved in it uh, as opposed to, say, building a big infrastructure or chasing dollars. I, th- I think we need to get the people involved. And as I've been walking out in the precinct, I've noticed that a lot of people don't realize we even have a Republican Party in Randall County. So yeah. you're a precinct chair. That's correct. I, uh, back in May, I came in to see if uh, the uh, position would have been filled or not. I noticed that it was listed as being vacant and went ahead and signed up as a precinct chair for uh, 208 out towards. What, what is the role of a precinct chair? Well, basically, the precinct chair is the, uh, I think, probably the most important part in our party structure because they're the ones that have the day-to-day interaction with the people in their neighborhood. And uh, that's significant because they can go out and have conversations with the people, hear their concerns, and uh, they represent the party to them, the, the, uh, the goals that the party wants to do at the plank. And also that gives the people, a, uh, the voters, uh, a means to uh, interact with the party apparatus. A lot of people, they don't understand how the Republican Party and the, or, the, or the Democrat Party, for that matter, how they work. How, do, how does the party platform get created for either party? Um, that, uh, well, that, that builds on the process we were just talking about. Uh, during the, the primaries, the uh, uh, part of that, the precinct chairs will have a precinct meeting or a, a uh, convention after the, the vote where the, the people of the, their precinct come in and they will discuss things that they want to be on the, the resolutions that they would like to put up to state. Uh, they'll elect uh, delegates to the county convention and then Later, all of that goes to the county convention where they basically do the same process. And uh, they'll, they'll vet the, uh, and discuss and vote on the various uh, resolutions that came out of the, the precincts. And they'll look at the delegates and then they'll, they'll select a similar process for going to the state. And then that will percolate up to the state with the delegates that came out of the county and the resolutions that came out of the county. And then that all goes to that process at state, and that's how the local level can influence the state plank. So everything's done at the local level. Correct. That's where it starts. But people don't know. No, no, they don't. When I've been talking to them, they have no idea. (laughs) So how does Randall County get their message out to the voters? Well, they don't right now, and that's one of the things we need to change. We need to focus more on education for the voters. We need to focus more on uh, getting out and talking to them and uh, uh, just having a, rebuilding a sense of community where they feel comfortable talking with us about that and just asking them questions and listening to what they say. So as a, if you become county chair, how will the voters know You're the county that chair. I'm the county chair. Yeah. Well, we will have a uh, uh, that'll be on the website, of course. But I think personal communication is much more effective. Uh, what I intend to do as a county chair is uh, help my precinct chairs build out their precincts, 
So I plan to go out with them as we are going door to door and talk, introduce ourselves, introduce myself as the, the county chair and introduce the precinct chair if they don't know them uh, and just begin building out uh, at that level. So, you, so you're going to build the party in Randall County? Yes, sir. That's exactly what I'm looking at doing. Well, that sounds like a fantastic idea. To get done, can you help us with Potter? Well, sure. We're, we should work as a team. <laughs> all, all the conservative uh, counties should work as a team. Yeah. So what do you think about, you know, you have Randall and you have Potter. Are you willing to work with Potter County uh, to bring in speakers and to get the vote out? Yes, because, um, I mean, we share a big chunk of Amarillo. And uh, Amarillo is pretty much the uh, uh, economic hub, I guess, of the, the panhandle. So we, we have a larger influence than just our two counties. And so I think it's important that we work as a team collectively, not just for our counties, but for the entire panhandle. Yeah, because we can, we can uh, assist the other counties just by our example, if nothing else. So the answer to the question is yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to... Uh, the, other, the other question... I'm have is um, how do you, how do you work with all the different groups and some are liberal and some are conservative of course they all say they're conservative but how do you work with all those groups in your district or I would say county um, to try to bring everybody together and what's the ultimate goal if you're the chair of the county to, to what's the ultimate goal and how do you work with all these disparate groups? Well, the, the ultimate goal I believe is to get our voters involved in the process and get them informed and provide them the tools to get informed. Um, I, I see Right now, we have a very relatively low voter turnout uh, to what it should be. When you compare to the, the registered voters to the number of voters that actually turn out, we need to increase that. Now, as far as working with the desperate groups, um, my approach is, is not really one of uh, uh, being confrontational or antagonistic. I think everybody has something valuable to contribute to the conversation. And I think we should have a conversation uh, with the groups and um, usually th there's value to be had from that. I guess what I'm thinking is um, I'm looking at voter turnout. Mm -hmm. And we seem to be a little bit complacent here. Right. In the panhandle. We know we're conservative. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But the people in Austin, they think different. Why is that? And how do we counter that? Well, uh, as I've been talking to people, there, there seems to be two different groups. Uh, one, like you just alluded to, we're so conservative, my vote, really, it's not important for me to vote because the conservative perspective is going to pass anyway. And the other group, which tends to be generally the younger demographic, doesn't think their vote counts because they don't have any faith in the system. And I think for both groups, uh, better education is needed. Uh, better leadership in that direction is needed. Uh, both groups need to understand that uh, when we vote in significant numbers, that has an upstream effect uh, that affects downstate, not just here. And if we just eat by every time just because we can, we're, we're not really getting the full measure out of our vote. So that has got to be countered or dealt with. And I think the biggest way to do it is consistent uh, education and discussion of it so that they understand. So we need to make people understand how important they are right, right. as individuals and voters. Exactly. That, that, that one vote does indeed count. 
They need to understand that. Yeah. All right. Well, why should people choose you over your opponents? Well, um, I have a background both in the military and in IT uh, for team building. And I think that's pretty critical in this. And, and um, we, I have not seen much structural focus on building teams. It's more like uh, a group clicks or something like that. But it's fairly dysfunctional what I've seen. And we need a, a consistent team structure where everybody's focused on the same mission. And for me, that mission is uh, engaging our voters to grab hold and take, take ownership of the franchise, their vote. Mm-hmm. That, that, to me, that is the primary focus that we've got to be looking at because everything else rides on that. And if the people aren't engaged, they, uh, we don't have uh, effective communication upstream on how our government is, is working. So to answer your question, uh, I've got lots of training in uh, team building, have, have been very successful in building teams that work. Um, and that, that's, that's what I uh, would want to bring with because it's not a um, – <clears throat> I tend to think of things in military terms, and I don't look at that as a, um, a uh, hierarchical, I'm the boss, you do what I say, because that's not the way we process work. Process terms. Right, process turns. Because um, when, I, when I enlisted, uh, the motto of the Army was, be all you can be. And later they changed it to uh, Army of One. And I hated that new motto because there's no such thing as an Army of One. Uh, be all you can be means uh, work within that teamwork structure because as you become the best and most capable of what you're doing, you're helping the team as a whole achieve its mission. So I would like the team building in Randall County to be more focused on the positive aspects, uh, finding people's strengths and putting them to their strengths, Uh, the people that have weaknesses, helping them learn to strengthen those weaknesses so that we work cohesively as a team. Well, you know, you don't know. You know, you might sit there with 10 years with a precinct chair very quiet, doesn't say much, but they have a problem, and he steps up, mm-hmm. solves the problem, right? Right. So, I, you know, as a, as a chairman of a party, I look at people, and it's amazing to me to watch them, and uh, at the right time, the right people will step up. Right. And that's kind of the way it is in life, you know, and that's why I think the party structure is so beautiful. People just need to understand it and be engaged in it because if we can pull these people in there, then we, we eliminate all problems in America. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, uh, but it's about, you're kind of like a gardener, you know, right. Creating the the field for the product to grow, right? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It does. It does. It's, it's kind of you can't do that in your private life, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're an agronomist. Well, um, I'm working on a, a, a. It's called community supported agriculture, but uh, basically, what you do is uh, uh, you you um, prepare the ground so that it's the most productive as possible and you use companion planting so that, you know, it, it's, it, the con- I like the same analogy. Thing. I like the analogy because it's very much the same thing. You, you prepare the ground for the people right. and uh, they, they build off each other and, and they can. They, uh, in, in the team structure, that, that is what I saw as well. Uh, you, you see the people that are willing to step up and you, you nurture them. You, you give them tasks that Once help them. Sprout, you water. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything else? Do you have a website people can? I do. Uh, it is uh, brianforrandall.com. That's Brian with an E and the uh, number four, 
brianforrandall.com. And it has all my contact information on there and a little bit more about me. Well, go to brianforrandall.com and uh, join his uh, organization and uh, let's sprout some good, good people in Randall County. There we go. Appreciate you coming by. You bet. Thank you for visiting with me. Have a good day.